This video will give you an overview of new My Cloud Services Console, which is one of the major enhancements in BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management 4.5. Hi, my name is Abhishek Rai. I work for customer support for BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management product. BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management 4.5 introduces a streamlined My Cloud Services Console for end users. The new console provides easier access to the catalog of available services, make options more intuitive, and allows multiple services to be requested at one time through the card. Most tasks that could be completed in the legacy console can also be completed in the new console. However, the legacy console must be used for some task. For example, if you have logged in using end user role, managing load balancer pool entries, and managing network paths can only be performed using the legacy console. Tenant administrator task, for example, adding users, managing quota, managing network containers can only be performed using legacy console. And cloud administrator task can only be performed using the cloud administrator console. Here is the new My Cloud Services console login page. Here is the default URL. Port can be changed based on your requirement. The background image can be easily changed. There is a folder in the installation directory where you can have your images and that can be used next time when you log in on the new console. Let's log in. When you log in into the My Cloud Services console, the default view displays the My Resources tab, which enables you to see details about the resources you have requested, the activities taken on resources, and the status of each resources. The resource list shows all the resources that are part of the services you requested, including the status of each resources. To find your resources, you can use various methods. Click a column name to short the table by that column. To change the column displayed in each in the table, click the select columns and select the columns you want to display. So when you click on select columns, you'll have list of columns which can be selected, unselected, and based on your uh, input, the columns will be displayed on the screen. You can click on the uh, column name and then the column will be sorted out based on uh, the column. You can use the search field to search uh, the specific resources. On the left hand side, you have resource type and the list of resource types. Based on your selection, the specific resource type will be will be shown on right hand side pane. So let's example services. It was on right hand side. So these are the uh, services. And when you click on servers, you'll have a server's name and then uh, the services name as well. You can use a arrow over here next to the uh, resources. You can click on that and then you can add the name as a filter. So here is a filter over here and it will filter out the resources and the section. You can cancel it out as well. You can perform multiple actions on the resources. You can so there are two ways for that. You can select the resource from here, click on the actions, and based on your selection, the actions will be displayed over here. The other way is you need to just click on this arrow, and the system will show you the actions which you can perform on this resource. Let's move to the activity log. The activity log page lists users activities such as if you submitted a request. This page also lists errors that have occurred on the resources that you requested. You can use the search field to filter it out. The successful activities will have a different color than the failed ones. Failed one will have a kind of orange color over here. Uh, to take a look at the more information, you can click on the more arrow and then you'll read out uh, the details about the failure. And if you would like to deep dive the actual cause and the action which can be performed on the failure, you can click on the troubleshooting information which will open a new page and this will give you uh, the cause and then actions which can be performed to fix the problem. In this release, we have enhanced our error messages. They are more descriptive and the actions which has been included which will help you to fix the problem on your own. Apart from enhancing the error messages, we have uh, included the steps and the steps will have uh, the different logics which was used in the SOI provisioning. So the logic was placement, quota uses, evaluations, configure networks, and others. You can click on this drop-down menus to take a look at the details of the placements. The first one in the list is select network containers, and you'll see the whole logic in selecting the network containers. If you go down a little, you'll see 
the logic selecting the network and uh, the details of that logic as well then you'll have compute pool and later you'll have uh, disk repository selections the next is the quota users logic and then the configured network logic so you have an options to download the log as well there's a link and with this you can directly collect the logs shared with the support for further troubleshooting let's move to the my requests the my request page shows all of the requests you have submitted the provisioning status of each server included and each request and the server modification status status from post installation d2 actions so there are total nine requests which was submitted and that's the reason you see order nine order three and then i believe one two three will be there as well whenever you submit a request the first status which will be shown is the processing the next is business approval pending submitted and then change approval pending and then provisioning and then provisioning and in yours you can also see the details of the uh, submitted request um, the resource set information will be shown over here like vdr vrps hardware os networking this mark shows that the provisioning was failed and you'll see a provisioning failure status as well over here let's move to the catalog tab the catalog tab shows the list of services offering that your cloud administrator has made available to you the catalog is where you begin the process of requesting a cloud services such as the RHEL offering or the Windows offering. Each service is represented by a tile that lists the name of the service, its cost, and some details about the component of service. And on our left hand side, we'll have filters. So, based on that, so just in case you have multiple categories, navigational categories, you can filter it out based on your requirement. So, let's select one of the uh, request or offering. So as soon as you select a requestable offering, uh, the page uh, will be shown over here to input the user values. You can uh, provide the service name, for example, our uh, HEL, hosting prefix can be anything. You can, you can input the description as well, server name. Server password. Okay, there was a validation as well. And once you fill all the information, you will you can see that the add to card label got enabled. You can change the quantity from here. You can have a number of quantities. I'll go for one. And you can see the estimated total cost over here. The other half page of this section will give you uh, the list of option, option choices you configured for your uh, requestable offering. Like, so in my case, I have got VDRs, VRPs. By default, none will be selected. Even though there's a radio button for your option choices, you need to select it specifically. So I'll go for SAN. As soon as you select an option choices, you can see the cost is being changed right away. I can select the uh, my compute pools, hardwares. You can see the cost is being changed. And then these, this hardware section is uh, giving you the list of hardwares which you configured in Service Blueprint. You can reset as well. Then the operating system which you selected uh, in the Service Blueprint. And then the networking information over here. So once you fill all the details, you can uh, click on Add to Card. And the data will be added or your requested offering will be added in, in your cart. And you can see on the right hand side, my card number has been increased by one so i can have another item in my card now so this is one and it will give you one new item added to the card and the detail about it i can proceed to checkout now so there are three items and i can click on proceed to checkout and i've got three items in it i can click next and proceed or i can click edit to edit the details once again based on uh, the information available over here or i can delete it as well Yes, I would like to delete it. Now my card item will be decreased by one. Now I've got only two items in my card. I can click next. So there are two items over here. I can have the charge code, decommission date set over here. And then I can click on submit request. Now take a look at the viewing quota information. So for any user logged in, you can take a look at the quota from uh, this 
a little buzz over here. The cloud administrator or a cloud organization administrator allocates quota to users. You can you cannot request a service if quota assigned to you is less than required for that service. Before provisioning a service offering instance, you can view the quota allocated to you and make decision about provisioning service accordingly. Your quota is updated every time you provision or decommission a service offering instance. That's it from uh, the new My Cloud Services console perspective. Uh, feel free to uh, comment to this video or you can leave your queries and uh, as soon as I take a look at it, I'll reply to you. Thank you so much.